Um, thank you very much. What I'm going to present here is very much a collaborative work done with uh, uh, my colleague Sean vidal Goren, who sadly couldn't be here today, but I wanted to give him tribute for all this uh, work. So I don't know if there are many uh, paleographers and medievalists in the room, but I um, would like to start with some guesswork. Here you have uh, five different uh, lines from manuscripts, except they are not all of them from manuscripts. Uh, some of them are from uh, fake generated uh, text lines. The question is which one? Um, well, I'm going to give you the, the answer. It's line three and five. There are some, some tales <laughs> if you look in, into detail. For instance, if you look on line five and you know some old French, the last word is Samor, meaning um, I love. Um, it should be an M, but the generator made an, an error and, and put it to some sort of N uh, instead, so a common palographical error, actually. Um, so all of what I'm going to present is done in the context of the project Artificial Past, Lost Texts and Manuscripts that Never Were, that is funded by the Paris Artificial Intelligence Research in the Institute. And it's a project with two different uh, aspects. The one is a simulation of textual tradition using tools from complex systems, and the other one is a generation of artificial manuscripts uh, using uh, artificial intelligence. Well, that's the second part on turning to focus. First question is why, except that it is fun, but why for what right reason could we want to generate uh, artificial manuscripts? So there is a very practical reason, which is data augmentation for tasks such as enriching text recognition. Um, and the other one, it's a um, longer term perspective for us, is the automatic restoration of uh, damaged manuscripts. So if you are missing part of the page, or do you make a realistic uh, hypothesis for that? As the architecture we have chosen are the generative adversarial networks. I'm not going into details here, but the idea is to have uh, two neural networks in competition. One is a generator that generates a sample of something, for instance, a pseudo manuscript line. And the other one is a discriminator which tries to guess, like we did uh, earlier on, which examples are real and which are uh, generated. Um, the architecture we used for this research is based on a pre-existing architecture called Scrabble GAN, uh, published by Fogel et al. in 2020, uh, with a few uh, tweaks. It uh, generally works uh, li like this. So we extract image text pairs from Alto Files uh, collection. We use several different data sets. One is a Crema medieval data set, uh, as we already presented in this conference. Um, the other one is a Maghrebi Arabic data set called Razam, and we also have some uh, ancient uh, Armenian uh, data. So what happens is that we simultaneously train an HDR recognizer using a real example. And on the other end, uh, the, um, uh, the image of the line are split on a character level. Um, and each character is split in the four different parts that are fed into a generator. And then the generator learns to uh, create from an input text a realistic uh, looking image, which is submitted to um, evaluated then both by a recognizer, rec recognizer and by the discriminator. The idea is that the recognizer controls for legibility. Is the text recognizable through HDR? And the discriminator uh, controls the image uh, likeliness uh, in a way, and they both uh, communicate. So um, if the text hasn't been recognized, they both compare uh, their um, the evaluation of the, um, of the line. So here are some examples of uh, artificial lines. These ones are for um, old French. Um, what you see here is that we used a fixed uh, length uh, line, and uh, since uh, the text was short for the line, the generator, um, much like a medieval scribe, used fake uh, letters to fill uh, the, the end of the, of the line. So, um, and you see it also uses um, dots of red to um, uh, stand from um, capital uh, letters, so um, also a medieval practice. Here are some examples that I'm uh, less at ease to comment from uh, Arabic and Armenian, so that mostly uh, Shan parts. Um, what it tells me about this line is that the Arabic text um, is uh, realistic looking, but a bit too blurry, and the Armenian text is 
very close to uh, manuscript reality. The only uh, telltale here is that the um, generator did not understood what the abbreviative sign uh, meant. So it's putting the abbreviative sign uh, a bit everywhere on the line, uh, not specially on abbreviation, but a bit on, above uh, any kind of random letters. So we also can generate variations in style. So here are different uh, variations in style of the Gothic alphabet um, generated with our model. And we've also, pro um, um, oh great, we've also um, um, performed some uh, different types of, uh, of uh, tests using our generated data. And the main uh, takeaway here is that use adding um, artificially generated data to an HTR training causes, as you can see on the training curve here on the left, um, it causes the network to um, learn to recognize the text a bit faster. So this kind of data augmentation has its first benefit, which is to uh, um, um, speeding up training, but the main benefit, uh, in practical benefit that we had was on out of the main uh, tasks. So namely on the Armenian uh, data set, we made a, a test. So we had training data for the HTR uh, model, which, was, which came from uh, um, old Armenian Bibles. And we made an in-domain test on Bibles and out-domain test on uh, Chronicles. So very different type of manuscript, very different type of text. And what we did uh, is we used data augmentation using text from chronicles to create fake chronicle image and perform data augmentation in the ways of with a different type of, uh, of text. Um, and you have the result of the test here. So the so in-domain test, um, there is uh, an increase in accuracy um, when you use more uh, artificial generated images, but it's really more uh, important on the out of the main tests when you can see there is almost uh, 10 points, uh, more than 10 points of uh, a difference in accuracy on the out of the main test. So, the, uh, so here our GAN approach brings out of the main lexicon and out of the main shapes uh, in the training and it's, it's explains this better performance. Another task that we are uh, currently doing uh, is creating artificial layouts. So using a similar approach, uh, we train uh, a GAN architecture to generate full manuscript pages from layout masks. So we have a few examples here for medieval French manuscripts uh, and so on. Um, but if I were to zoom, you would see that the text uh, here on this image is made of real letters, but with no real words. So on, when we generate um, full pages, we cannot control the text as formal. So both approach um, uh, do work together, generating fake lines and generating fake uh, pages, and we hope to be able to um, uh, concatenate those approaches at some point. So here was what I wanted mostly to, to say. So um, we also have some perspectives for, for the future. Uh, we have another uh, in, in progress project uh, on building another set of burnt manuscripts coming from the library of uh, Turin, who burned in 1904. So it's a BBC Plus rescapé project with uh, Patricia O'Connor and Marco Maulu. So we're building a, um, a set of training material from this manuscript. Um, we're working both on generating fake, fake pages and fake lines. And at some point, one of our goals will be to try and articulate page generation, line generation, and burn manuscript data uh, to be able to offer a hypothesis of artificial restoration of this, uh, of this manuscript. And if it's a, a topic that interests you, we have an ongoing uh, call for contribution for a, a workshop uh, this uh, winter uh, in Paris on the topic of philology and artificial intelligence in the service of burned manuscripts. Uh, one open question that remains, and I would be happy to receive uh, input about that, is how do we evaluate uh, the fake lines or the fake pages? There is an um, obvious way, which is um, training recognizers and see how a fake image improves recognizer performance, but how do we evaluate their uh, likeliness uh, for the expert, for the human, uh, and that's a topic uh, on which we, uh, uh, we will be working. And thank you very much.